Hello and a very warm welcome back to Fox's Weight Watcher Kitchen. I'm Johnny Fox. Now today's recipe guys, I wanted to show you how I make Fox's chocolate chip cookies. Okay, today's recipe is gonna be your chocolate chip cookies, but today we're gonna to do things a little bit different. As you can see, nothing on here already. Your standard cookies, you're normally using things like flour, eggs, sugar, butter, all the things that put the weight in the belly. So what are we gonna to use to make things a little bit different? We're gonna use a can of chickpeas. First with the chickpeas, we're gonna put the chickpeas in a, in a sieve, give them a good rinse, Make sure they're all nice and dry, and then once we're done, we'll end up with a bowl full of chickpeas round about there. Other ingredients we're gonna use, I'm using two today. I like my almond butter, and I also like my peanut butter. How much of this are we gonna use? We're gonna be using half of a cupful of a mixture of the peanut butter and the almond butter. Other ingredients, we're gonna need a bit of baking powder, and my ever favorite maple syrup instead of honey. Normally you would put sugars and things in for sweetening this time. Have tried it with bananas as well. Do do that one with bananas and oats as well. That's another recipe for another day. But today we're gonna to be putting maple syrup in there from the Skinny Food Company. I'll put the link in underneath if you wanna get some of these syrups as well. So how do we put all this together? Very simple. Just get your food processor. This is all you will need. One food processor, and we literally put everything inside. All of the chickpeas, weight-wise, if you're cooking these at home, remember in the past I've shown you, haven't got any with me today, you know the big bags of chickpeas, if you're gonna pressure cook those up and cook them yourself, you will find that the chickpeas, once you've done them and dried them out and taken all the shucks off, around about 220 grams. Half a cup of peanut butter and almond butter, and this is always better if you keep this sort of room temperature, makes it a lot easier to work with. Let's just get this on the side. And all of these ingredients, it, it couldn't be easier to make a recipe for this one. We're just literally putting every single thing into this food processor. Maple syrup, or you can use honey if you, if you still want the healthy alternative, but you don't want the skinny food stuff. Maple syrup, I'm using roughly three spoonfuls of the maple syrup. This will give that lovely sweet taste. Here's the second one. And there's my third one. So the maple syrup is done. From the Skinny Food Company, like I say, link, link for that will be underneath if you want to find where to get that one from. Other things we'll need, a little bit of vanilla. This again is to taste. Because I like my vanilla, I will pour mine in quite thick. Recipe usually calls for around about a teaspoonful, but I like mine a bit more. Talking of teaspoons full for any kind of baking that we're doing, you need your baking powder. This is where I will get the one proper measure and use one, one teaspoonful of baking powder. That is all of the ingredients. <clears throat> How hard is the rest of this gonna be? Let's get the lid, put that onto the top. Every food process is different. Some people have got the big chunky ones. I like my little ninja. I don't know if you can still buy this or not, but I've had this for quite a few years. And then we just pulse it all together for about three or four minutes. Sometimes whilst it's pulsing as well, if you find that it sticks to the side, it is quite a tight mix. It's not a loose mix by any means, very, very tight. If you get some of the chickpeas that stick onto the side, all you've got to do is give them a quick wipe down and put them back into the mix. It's a very dry mix, and I find as well, if you find it's a little bit too dry, or if for some reason like this one it is a little bit too dry this time, I'm gonna get a little bit more maple syrup just to help it, because I, I like mine to be a little bit looser, so you can add some more wet stuff, or you can even add water if you just wanna keep it not so sweet. But let's face it, guys, they're cookies. The cookies always taste lovely and sweet. That's a bit better. And now we've got that all blended up together. 
put the gadget back down under the bottom shelf off with the lid and as you can see beautiful mix in there nice love beautiful smell this as soon as you take the lid off you get that lovely peanut butter smell and almond butter smell you can use other ingredients if you want to use things like whole walnuts you can or pecan nuts whatever kind of nut takes your fancy is purely to get a taste of a nut into your cookie which i like those of you that got nut allergies obviously don't use this use your normal butters but then you're not going to be losing things like your weight which is what we're after doing now the other ingredient i don't like to go too heavy on this after all they're going to be chocolate chip cookies and you can if you don't want to have just chickpea cookies like this the way they're normally done you can within the same mix if you want to have the darker chocolate ones put some cocoa powder in there as well and you get what i call the double choc chip and all we're going to use for these around about a quarter in fact i might go just a little bit heavier than that i grab a few more i must get a bag a bag more of these just a few more usually around about a quarter of a spoonful and all we're going to do is just fold this into the mix you can see it's quite loose inside but it takes quite a bit out of the blade once you're blending these together but you can see it's a lovely loose mix on there and all we're doing is just folding these in and then comes the easy bit that is all the mix all done and dusted so what's next let's get a baking tray and a cookie scoop so start with one scoop per cookie and just put these same as what we do remember on the macaroon one that i did last time exactly the same we're just scooping these up but there's a little trick to this you know when you do your standard cookies guys they always come out lovely and squashed and flat this i'll do one row to show you first just a row of four or five in a row but you can see it's quite a wet mix this one because i added the extra juice one more scoop and then i'll show you what we do to get the shape because these unlike your standard cookies they won't dissolve down because it's a very wet mix so all we do i can grab my little bowl i always keep a bowl of water when i'm doing this and just with a fork all i'm going to do is just squash them down one way and squash them down the other way back in the water to keep it moist squash them down one way and squash them the other way and if they fall apart like that just push it back together just so you can keep if you if you don't put this in the water you'll find that when you you might be able to get two or three but you can see very sticky it doesn't want to come away and all we're doing is creating this lovely cookie shape so i'm going to carry on doing the rest of these and then we'll be right back all done we just put the little shapes together as you can see it's such an easy thing because they're round just give them a little shape with the fork and then they'll be ready to go in the oven cook wise as well guys when you put these in the oven make sure you preheat the oven which I forgot to say at the beginning so let's rewind blah, 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 blah. preheat your oven before you begin put it on 180 if you're in in uh, centigrade or 350 if you're in fahrenheit keep the oven on so it's nice and warm and these will bake in the oven usually sort of 17 to 20 minutes depending on how hot your oven really gets and as you can see lots and lots of cookies there i'm going to go away and take these and bake these into the oven and i'll show you these and be right back when they're cooked so back in a while 
Okay, so they've been in the oven for about 22 minutes, I think this time around because I made the mix a lot wetter. So normally I'd bake them for about 18 minutes, but again, it's one of those things you watch when you're in the oven, when they start browning off. You can see I've already eaten half of this on the way back from the oven, I couldn't resist it. They're really nice. If you are gluten intolerant, guys, there's no wheat in there from the flour. You haven't got your butter, you haven't got your sugars, a much healthier alternatives. With the chickpeas and the peanut butter, taste-wise, they are absolutely delightful. That perfect little nibble in the evening time still gives you the cookies that you need, but you're losing the weight at the same time. Hopefully, guys, you've enjoyed the video. I'm even going to enjoy later on having a few more of these. They'll probably last me two to three days to get through a batch of these with my wife and I, and then hopefully we can make some more things ready for you next week. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe button's underneath. Click on that. If you like it, give it a big thumbs up as well. Leave some comments. Be interesting to know how yours turned out as well, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Take care. Have a great week, guys. Bye.